Hi. What will Ray Franz want to talk about in the last two pages of Crisis of Conscience? Here he goes. The question is asked, where then do I go? What do I become? I feel no need to go anywhere, for I know the one who has the sayings of everlasting life. I appreciate the strengthening companionship of those I have with whom to associate, either personally or by correspondence, and hope that the future will add to my acquaintance with yet other sincere persons whose concern is for truth, not simply in doctrine, in words, but as a way of life. I am simply trying then to be a Christian, a disciple of God's Son. I cannot see why anyone would want to be anything else. I cannot understand how anyone could hope to be anything more. The past is now past. I have much to be grateful for, comparatively few things to regret. By this I am not minimizing the seriousness of error. When the sands of time begin to run low in one's life, the damaging effects of having allowed any measurable degree of error to affect one's earlier decisions and life course can become rather painfully apparent. I have no regrets as regards hardships endured in the past. I feel I have learned valuable lessons from them. The trusting confidence I placed in a human organization, however, has proved to have been misplaced. Having spent the greater part of my life endeavoring to direct people to God and to His Son, I find that that organization views such ones as if their flock answerable to them, subject to their will. Nonetheless, I am happy in the knowledge that I personally sought to encourage such ones to build their faith on God's Word as the sure foundation. My trust is that that labor will prove to have been not in vain. At an age where other men contemplate retirement, I find myself just trying to make a start in providing for future needs for myself and my wife. Yet, along with the Bible writer, I can say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? That from Hebrews 13, verse 6. I do not regret in any way having held to conscience. The good that has resulted far outweighs any unpleasantness experienced. Some early decisions based on false presentations of God's will produced effects that seem well nigh irreversible. I still get a hollow feeling inside whenever I think of leaving behind a wife with no son or daughter to supply emotional support and comfort, or to provide perhaps for her economic needs more adequately than I may be able to do in the years that yet remain. But there is a future beyond the immediate future, and it is hope in that future and the divine promises related to it that calm my heart. Though I find some of their actions incomprehensible, I feel no more authorized or inclined to pass judgment on those individuals who have rejected me than I feel they had the right to pass judgment on me. My sincere wish would be that the future might bring them better days, for I feel that there is so much that they could do that would broaden their outlook and lives and cause their days to become far richer in more meaningful ways. I hope I have learned from mistakes of the past, and although I will certainly make more, I trust that at least there will be improvement for the good of others as well as my own. I do not regret that I do regret rather that I cannot personally apologize to some whom I have wronged in one way or another, but my prayers are that no lasting hurt will come, and I trust in God's providence in those areas that are beyond my ability to do anything about. Hopefully, the remaining years of my life may see a measure of peace for my wife and me, and God's blessing on our united efforts to serve Him all our days. Then he mentions Ed Dunlap. After his summary expulsion from the international headquarters, Edward Dunlap passed through Alabama on his way to Oklahoma City and is beginning life anew there at 69 years of age. In talking with him, he said, It seems to me that all one can do is try to lead a Christian life and help people within whatever sphere of influence 
he normally has. All the rest is in God's hands. And there ends Ed Dunlap's advice to Ray. Ray concludes, I am grateful to have been able to make available information that I feel others have a right to hear. There is much more that could be said, perhaps that needs to be said, to give a complete picture. But whether time, life, and circumstances allow for saying it or not, I am content to let the results of what has now been said rest in God's hands. And so ends Ray Franz's witness. But of course his life was not over and he would live more than 20 years after the publication of Crisis of Conscience and we hope in future videos not only to celebrate what those 20 years accomplished in bringing further blessings to the people who he's trying to reach here, namely ex-Jehovah's Witnesses and those still in the organization, but also to summarize from his second book, In Search of Christian Freedom, some of the conclusions he reached, his more mature conclusions after he had finished Crisis of Conscience. So in some future videos we hope to get around to passing along some of Ray's deeper thoughts and final thoughts in many cases upon issues that all of us who have had experience in the watchtower can profit from.